Hello there. Welcome to Tech Talks with Mastercard, where we have fascinating conversations with industry leaders about the latest in the world of technology and digital commerce. Join us as we dive in to explore the hottest trends and insights on how tech is transforming businesses and economies in India and across the globe. Open banking is growing rapidly and transforming the world of financial services. The global value of open banking payments is estimated to surpass 100 billion US dollars by 2026. Isn't that amazing? But what is open banking and how does it add value to you as a consumer? Let's find out in this episode. I am your host Ritwik Bothakur and I'm delighted to have Amar Karveer who will help us demystify the world of open banking. Amar is a senior vice president open banking india operations at mastercard Amar welcome to tech talks with mastercard excited to be here ritwik thank you for having me over that's great and amar before we start the discussion on open banking do let us uh, know a bit about yourself please sure let me take a half a minute uh, so i have been associated with open banking for the last 5 plus years and my primary responsibility is running the india operations of open banking for mastercard thank you for that amar and uh, i would now like to go back to the question that i started this podcast with when i uh, we talked about the amazing figures and estimates that the industry has uh, for open banking so tell us what exactly is open banking sure so let me give you a couple of different perspectives so if you look at open banking it puts the consumer at the center of having control on their banking data and lets them decide what part of their banking data they want to make available to some other entity and for what specific business purpose so the consumer is at the center consumer or small business and open banking really enables them to control and make decisions about sharing their data now this consumer permission data can then be used by financial entities and fintechs to develop uh, innovative services and features that ultimately benefit the consumer or the small business and which also significantly enhance the uh, consumer experience uh, if you look at globally uh, open banking allows consumers to share their financial data with third party providers to access new services products opportunities and this can lead to a higher level of competition which is which is beneficial for consumers and small businesses can lead to cutting edge innovation and thereby significantly enhance the customer experiences so in a, in a nutshell again open banking provides or powers secure rapid delivery of digital financial services including let me give you an example for example in the payment space consumer permission data can help reduce failure failure of payments and help mitigate the risk that is associated with the payment experience and this is true for financial institutions fintechs as well as the consumers so hopefully that gives you a flavor for what open banking is ritwik absolutely and i think that's a great summary uh, especially for me it's uh, it's it's a great point to start off with uh, to delve into a much larger world i'm sure about uh, open banking uh, but but again um, i know amar you talked about how this ties in consumers and businesses but could you tell me why this is important today how is open banking important specifically for consumers you know for from the consumer standpoint and also say for small businesses in the world sure so again for this i am not going to delve too much into the technology aspects of it but more from a functional standpoint mm-hmm. so as a consumer of a small business really open bank with open banking you control the access to your data and you decide whom to share it with so open banking really enables you to securely share your financial data with trusted third party providers access personalized financial advice make faster payments get better deals on financial products and services so all in all consumer at the center and their ben- their, their ben- experience gets enhanced as a consumer again you decide using a consent based approach who can access your financial data for what purpose and also for how long right so that's key uh, consent is not a one time thing it's not a one way street uh, again the consumer is in control open banking can also enhance security and reduce fraud 
by giving you greater control on your financial information and reducing the risk of unauthorized access or misuse of your data. So with open banking, you can access a single centralized view of your financial data from different accounts and institutions, making it easier for you to monitor your spending, manage your budgets, make informed decisions. This is kind of just a flavor I, I want to give the audience. The convenience and the ease of use that open banking provides for end users is one of the more or most important benefits. So by having your financial information in one place, consolidated, you can track your transactions, view your balances and manage your money more efficiently. So without getting into a whole lot of uh, use cases, which are increasing by the day, hopefully this helps provide a perspective to the consumer on what, what they can do with the power of open banking. Well, that sounds fascinating, Amar. And, uh, you know, I know that you touched upon how consumers can be in control of what they share, which also brings me to another interesting point. Um, so India, of course, has uh, made tremendous progress in the digital payments um, uh, space and is becoming a pioneer in robust policies related to not only payments, but also data security and privacy. Uh, how do you see open banking evolve uh, in such a landscape, especially in India? Sure, sure. That's a that's a fairly uh, powerful question, uh, Ritwik, and it's it's I, I'll provide provide a broad perspective, trying to cover as many aspects. So, for a minute, let's take a look around the world a little to see how open banking has evolved. Uh, the U.S., for example, has been a demand-driven market for open banking, and regulation has been quite far behind, to be honest, in terms of catching up. There is now growing momentum in U.S. towards a regulatory framework, but that is still lagging. Europe, on the other hand, is a regulation-driven market. When it comes to India, it, it would surprise some of us to know that India has been a demand-driven market for open banking. And at the same time, the RBI has shown an amazing focus in continuing to develop and evolve a robust regulatory framework. I, I personally believe that the opportunities in India for us to derive the most benefits from open banking with the consumer and small businesses at the center are immense. Uh, let it, let's just look at the last decade in India. Uh, we have seen significant strides in the digital payments with initiatives like the UPI, Unified Payments Interface, leading the way and showing the world how to implement digital payment infrastructures at a massive scale, which is what India offers. Now, many of us may have heard about the India stack that has provided a robust infrastructure for the accelerated growth of the digital economy in India. Just, just kind of give you a high level view. The India stack consists of four layers. Uh, these include the presence-less layer, the paperless layer, the cashless layer, and the consent layer. Um, and again, just to give you a one line uh, overview of each of these, and I'll tie it back to the open banking, is the presence-less layer is achieved or it provides for a unique digital biometric identity with an open API access. And Aadhaar is the uh, foundation of this layer. The paperless layer offers easy storage and retrieval of information digitally. And this includes the Aadhaar eKYC, the eSign, the digital locker, and the likes. If you look at the cashless layer, this is the electronic interoperable payment network. And really, if you top of mind, two things that everyone or most, most of us would know is, is this includes the UPI and the IMPS, which are both run by the N NPCI, the National Payments Corporation of India. And coming to the last layer is the consent layer, which is the most recent. Uh, this layer is a modern cutting edge privacy data sharing framework with an open personal data store and is run by the Reserve Bank of India. And this layer, the consent layer, is the one that is really powering the growth of open banking in India. So Ritwik, hopefully this provides a bit of perspective on how India is evolving or in terms of open banking. Absolutely, Amar. I mean, this is really fascinating and especially these four layers and how open banking is structured around this it sounds like a very intricate structure. Uh, and the first thing that comes to my mind when I see this 
uh, and especially rolling out in India. Uh, what would be some of the top challenges faced by open banking in this space, especially specifically in this country? Sure, sure. So, so rather than focus only on India, uh, let me give you a global view on the on the challenges faced in the open banking space. And by the way, these also apply to India on a much larger scale. So at the core of the success of open banking is the need for an environment of rock solid trust. Uh, the trust that the consumer and small businesses place in whichever entity in, is handling their data on the fact that their data will be handled with, with the utmost security and privacy. Now, lack of this trust among consumers and small businesses can be the single largest impediment towards adoption of open banking in any market globally. And that is why the data security and data privacy uh, becomes, or how we manage that, becomes especially paramount for the success of open banking. Now, based on our experiences in MasterCard uh, across different geographies, what we have also seen is that the lack of standardization of data access and data formatting can also be a major issue for the success of open banking. Uh, so again, linking back to what I said earlier about how the different markets have evolved around the world, based on whether the open banking growth in a particular market or geography is regulatory driven or demand driven or a mix of the two, the intensity of this particular lack, this particular challenge, which is the lack of standardization, the intensity of that challenge varies. And which is why you also see now that even in demand driven markets, such as the US, there is a growing momentum for building standardization through the uh, through putting in place regulatory frameworks. Got it. That that is great, Amar. Uh, and you lead open banking India operations for Mastercard. Uh, could you tell us a bit about what is Mastercard's focus when it when it comes to open banking? Sure. Uh, and I think again. I am going to delve not on the technology aspect, but really our approach to open banking across the world. Sure. So when it comes to open banking, we are really focused on building trust, improving the consumer experience and leveraging technology to drive innovation. Uh, we know that, I mean, like we have talked in the last few minutes, open banking involves sharing of sensitive financial data. And that's why we place a very high priority on developing a secure and reliable data sharing infrastructure. Because building trust in open banking is critical to its success and growth. And MasterCard is committing to ensuring that consumers will trust the open banking ecosystem. We also believe that open banking has, has the potential to provide consumers with personalized and relevant financial services. And that's why we are working to make open banking easy for consumers to use and understand. And our goal is to make the user experience seamless, intuitive, so that consumers can take advantage of all that open banking has to offer. Uh, one last uh, comment. We are investing in cutting edge technologies such as artificial intelligence and machine learning to unlock the full potential of open banking. Because we believe that Technology will be key to developing new and exciting financial products and services that will that will benefit consumers and businesses alike. And while we look forward to the future of open banking, we will continue to help shaping it in a way that puts the consumer at the center, because that's really the that's really our philosophy when it comes to open bank. That's wonderful to hear. And I think many of us uh, who use digital products when we have the assurance that consumers are at the center uh, and that the decisions uh, that are taken to make these products safer and better, keeping consumers in mind, we would all sleep better at night. So that's wonderful to hear, Amar. Uh, lastly, I would ask you, what are you most excited about uh, when it comes to the world of open banking and especially the future of open banking? Sure, Ritwik. So I, I'm going to give you my individual perspective on this. So out of all the benefits of open banking, the one that I am most excited about is the power it has to achieve financial inclusion for citizens around the world. Now, what does financial inclusion mean? It, it means that you are now able to have people or consumers and small businesses around the world 
included in the digital economy when earlier or in earlier days these consumers and small businesses were invisible on the digital ecosystem did not have access to credit or could not be part of the digital economy to better their own lives or to grow their business one more time right uh, with uh, with open banking you can choose to share your financial information with third party providers like we spoke before and these third party providers can offer more personalized and tailored services based on your individual needs and preferences so open banking can improve financial in inclusion by providing access to financial services for those who may not have ac had access before so mastercard has expanded its worldwide commitment to financial inclusion by pledging to bring a total of 1 billion people and 50 million micro and small businesses into the digital economy by 2025 and as a part of this effort there is also a direct focus on providing 25 million women entrepreneurs with solutions that can help them grow their businesses now if you pause for a second this is powerful and will have a huge uplifting impact on the society and one of the pillars that is going to or is helping us achieve this goal is the innovations in open banking so really that will hopefully summarize what what makes me most excited about the future of open banking this sounds wonderful amar and totally speaks to the focus that mastercard has on the on powering businesses empowering people and also doing well by doing good so that's fascinating and thank you so much amar for spending your time with us this has been a great conversation and uh, thank you so much again it's been a pleasure talking to you ritvik thank you for joining us on this episode of tech talks with mastercard we hope you found today's discussion valuable don't forget to share it with your friends and colleagues and do subscribe to the podcast to stay updated on upcoming episodes until next time stay curious stay informed and stay ahead of the curve